Hello and welcome to the Dinosaur for week 22, another seven curious interesting things I saw last week. So as ever, let's crack on. As ever, if you do need any consultancy, workshops and all that sort of good stuff, if you want the Dinosaur in person at your business or you want a beginner's guide to AI, find me on LinkedIn, that's what I do. Uh, first of all, we have the Dolly app. Uh, this, is, uh, this is amazing, it uses all the good stuff. It uses your camera to scan your 3D object, for instance, it then turns it into a product video. So. As you can see here, I had a suitcase, which I've just uh, secretly, my daughter doesn't know this, but I've secretly put a minion eye on it and I've created a product video for it as well. So you do the standard scan around it with your phone and then you wait for about, uh, it's about 45 minutes it took to do it. And uh, you get one credit and you can download it uh, for free. So if you want to do any more than that, you need more credits, but there you go, uh, iOS only, but uh, pretty cool as you can see. Uh, this is news from Switzerland. Scientists have created a 16, uh, organoid computer. Now an organoid is when you take stem cells and you create essentially uh, the organ cells within a little cluster like this. So it could be a, an, um, basically something like a liver or a brain cell or something like that or a muscle cell. Uh, but what they've done is they've clumped four of them together and then put four of those. So they've got 16 and they uh, apparently there are a million times less uh, energy to use these than a, a normal silicon CPU. So if you're thinking the world is going to be such a dry of energy because of all the AIs, then this might actually be the solution. The only problem is these are organic and they die normally after hours, but they've managed to actually get them to 100 days, which is amazing. Uh, but they do die eventually or they do wither or they become uh, ineffective. So uh, there you go. So we might be using a human brain cell computers pretty soon. So nicely done. Uh, glass, glass. I guess if you're from the south, uh, has a, had an update. Uh, this is some um, German scientists who have invented this new coating, which is a micro pyramid coating. So essentially silicon in little pyramids. And what that does is actually it scatters the light as it's coming through. And it also has some pretty funky properties. So not only does it scatter the light, uh, in doing so, it actually is 4% more light that is transmitted through the light than just plain uh, I guess transparent glass, uh, which is cool because it scatters the light and therefore radiates more in. Obviously it is now privacy glass because it scattered it. Uh, it also uh, stops mud and dirt. It's hydrophobic, I guess, hydroscopic, one of those two. Uh, it makes basically water bead on top of it and therefore fall off. So it's self cleaning. Uh, and also it has the effect of cooling uh, the ambient temperature as well. So as much as five, uh, six degrees C. So this is like super glass. As long as you don't want it to be transparent, then this is potentially the future of glass thinking where would you use this? Well, clearly it would be things like skylights or on uh, big warehouses where you don't maybe need um, see-through lights in the, in the ceilings. And also that would have caused the uh, room to heat up anyway, but also greenhouses is potentially where it can be used. So that's pretty funky. Uh, ChatGBT uh, loves the number 42. Obviously, if you're a big fan of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you'll know that is the meaning of life. Um, well, why is this? Well, if you are a large language model, you basically use uh, probabilities rather than absolutes or logic. So, uh, for instance, if you have learnt your maths through probability, uh, you were probably also sucked in a load of books, a load of literature, a load of cultural things as well. So 42 is a very important number. Uh, probably for technology and nerds and also literature. So if you ask of it, uh, here are a hundred random uh, numbers, please choose one of them. It is more often likely, in if you ask it in English, to choose 42. If, for instance, you choose uh, Chinese language, it's more likely to say 57. We don't know, really know what that is. It probably is it just because it isn't 42. Um, also, the little graphs at the top, that if you uh, ask it a list of 100 numbers and say, please choose at random, whichever the first couple of numbers are in that array or that list, it will probably choose those as well. And the two funky looking graphs at the bottom are all about temperature. Now with the large language model, temperature is kind of how chaotic it is. If it's no temperature at the bottom, it's more likely to choose its natural whatever it would choose. In which case, as you can see on the left hand one in the UK, it is more likely to choose 42. As the temperature increases and it gets a little bit more chaotic, you start to then see these other numbers start to be used. And likewise, the Chinese version as well. So as you can see, it's very much at low temperature, i.e. in its natural state, if you haven't asked it to be particularly funky, it will start choosing numbers not at random. So uh, if you're using your large language model ChatGPT to do any sort of maths or any sort of number, number computation, you need to be aware of this. 
Um, I didn't know about this. I've been doing some painting recently and somebody mentioned this on a forum. Uh, this is colour changing paint, specifically ceiling paint. I don't know why ceiling paint, but there you go. Uh, a number of companies do this. Uh, this is Valspar and I uh, just chose their video. Why not? Uh, and it's got a purple dye in it that disappears over about 45 minutes to two hours, something like that. Whenever your paint is dry, it will dry absolutely white. But the whole point of this dye is you can tell if you're putting it over a, a layer underneath, whether you've missed any spots or not. So uh, I think that's, uh, I didn't know about this. Um, this is a thing apparently, and what a genius invention. Uh, there you go, color changing paint. It's been out for a couple of years, by the way, just did not know about it. Uh, diner buttons. So this is uh, Carnegie Mellon, some researchers there. Now there's a couple of really funky things going on here. One, it's a button that can inflate and deflate, which I think is really cool. Therefore it can give you some haptic feedback and you see it can, it can react to those as well. So there's a lot of stuff. This is, it's dynamically trying to remain level. It's trying to, that little laser dot that it's trying to do. Um, so there's some really funky things going on here, but also what I learned about was uh, these things called embedded electroosmotic pumps. So as you notice, there's no real there's no real pipes going into this to inflate that thing. It's actually a 1.5 millimeter electronic device essentially that just uses kind of static uh, positive and negative between two terminals to move a fluid about. So um, there's no actual moving parts in this thing, but it can actually go 300 times faster than equivalent electro osmotic pumps, which is the big thing here. So you can get those <laughs> amazing uh, shapes. There you go. So. Um, uh, this might be coming to a uh, an iPad or you know a phone next to you, but also you know for Braille, amazing. But um, haptic feedback is brilliant. Um, teletext. I went down a whole rabbit hole in this one, so thank you, Graham, for suggesting that. I I'll probably went a bit deeper than imagined. But um, Teletext was invented in the UK and was uh, cancelled in 2012. Lots of other countries around the world still use it. And in fact, I think something like 10 million people in Germany still use Teletext in 2023. So um, it's well loved um, and it's still used. Um, it's in the, let's say, the terrestrial organic uh, analog broadcast signal. It's not necessarily in the digital signal. So uh, until now, so Deutsche Telekom have now put it in their Magenta TV IPTV platform. So their sort of streaming service uh, and they're converting the, the basically the teletext to be available on their digital service. So yes, in the UK, you can get digital teletext or digital text, and it's not the same service. It's basically like the internet, but for TVs. Whereas this thing uh, is hails back from the mid seventies. Uh, apparently it's one of those things that, you know, um, people are saying, if you get rid of it, then there's gonna be some revolution. Um, however, there you go. So uh, innovation coming to TVs in 2024 with a 1975 invention, 1974, something like that. So um, there you go. Teletext, well done Deutsche Telekom for translating Teletext into IPTV. And there you go. So uh, if that was interesting, if that was useful, then fantastic. Share it with somebody. If you're not subscribed, you know what to do. And I'll see you next week. Thank you.